Welcome to today's video. It is currently 7 a.m. As you can tell, I'm probably looking a bit tired, but I'm super excited because we're doing a full vlog and making the most out of this photo trip talking about how we can all improve in our fall photography and you'll have a better idea on how to capture fall with wherever it is that you live. Now, the first location that we're actually gonna go to is probably the most touristy of all of them today and that is Lion's Lookout in Huntsville. Huntsville is this super small cottage country town but it's kind of like the main town in the area if that makes any sense and weirdly enough, it's super flat but it's got a massive hill right in the middle of it and I wanted to get they're right for sunrise to capture really just the first photo of the day and that is a landscape photo and talk about the first thing that everybody should know when they're taking fall photography and that is to read your fall color reports I wanted to make that tip number one because I've spent the last couple weeks basically keeping track of the fall colors to figure out when I was gonna do this trip the first year I did it I kind of got lucky and went literally peak fall I had amazing conditions it was super rainy and we'll talk about why shooting fall colors in the rain is good later on in the video but it was super rainy and I got some really great photography that day. The second year, however, I decided to do the drive probably a week or two too early and there was only like a 30% color change and when you find yourself taking fall colors at that point, you end up running into some issues where there are too many greens, not enough oranges and you don't get that punch in your photography. So my number one tip if you wanna make the most of the season is to actually find a fall color report for whatever it is in your area. With that, we're gonna go over to a little town called Dorset now they have a fire tower that I've been dying to climb up for a while now and I'm pretty excited that today's the day it's actually gonna happen so let's get on into the car drive on over I think it's like a 15 20 minute drive and we can get today started so we've made it to Dorset tower and I am already blown away by how good the colors look the view is phenomenal I'm so happy I made it out here and I would say that if you are looking at finding a lookout tower in Muskoka that this is definitely worth the stop, but it can get extremely busy. And given it's been closed the last two years, I think there's a ton of demand. And so even though this is going to be tip number two, my actual number one tip for doing fall photography is to make sure you use a polarizer. These can be found for phones and for cameras. And what this is going to do is cut out all of the reflections that basically exist in your potential photo. So that's gonna be on things like water, but more importantly, it's going to cut reflections off of leaves. It's going to add a ton more saturation to your fall photography as a result. And so I'm gonna put two photos up on the screen, one of them being without a polarizer, one of them being with. And so by using a polarizer, you're really gonna up the overall quality of your photography definitely for landscape photography and definitely for automotive photography, it is 100% worth the pickup. So we're gonna head on out now, probably grab a quick snack at Henrietta's, which is like this little cafe that is basically infamous at this point in the area for these things called clouds. I'll show you what they are once I get them because they're kind of hard to explain. Um, and then we're gonna pop on down to Bracebridge because there is a waterfall there. Can't take fall photos without seeing a waterfall. So with that, let's get this area done and carry on to the next stop. All right, so unfortunately I'll put a couple clips up on the screen of Henrietta's, but they're out of clouds. I asked what happened, <laughs> why there's no clouds, and they said they can't get the right flower. So instead I went for the go-to, and that is a croissant. Figure something light, because I'm having sushi tonight for dinner, so that's the plan. <laughs> Croissant's pretty good though. Hopefully when the flower does show up, we can actually come back at some point and get them, but it is what it is. All right, so done from the cafe and behind me, if you can hear it, are some waterfalls. And why we're here is because the next tip is that to take really great fall photography, it is to actually use an ND filter. And you might be thinking, why do you need an ND filter if you're just taking photos of leaves? But the reality is, is when you're taking fall photography, it is the perfect opportunity to take photos of waterfalls. And when you're using an ND filter, it will help you capture it better. What this is gonna allow you to do is to actually take long exposure photos in the daytime. And when you're in the daytime, you can't really do that. You need to up your shutter speed to be able to capture things properly exposed. And what an ND filter does is essentially acts like sunglasses for your lens. You put the ND filter on and it basically darkens darkens the amount of light that gets to the sensor, meaning that you can increase the amount of your shutter speed duration to be able to get a nice flowing look 
through your water photos instead of just grabbing a photo and freezing the way the water is falling in that moment. And so I'll put up a couple examples on the screen. It's starting to rain just a little bit. So I'm gonna go take those photos, show you what they look like, and hopefully it stops raining by then and we can continue on to the next location. But really, get an ND filter, your waterfall photos are gonna thank you for it. And with all the fall colors around, it's going to look absolutely fantastic. So I hope you give it a try. So we've made it to Gravenhurst and in between Gravenhurst, there is a road that takes you through one of the most incredible canopies of fall colors on your way through Muskoka. So that's where we're gonna go next actually. And before we do that, I just wanna talk about weather conditions. A lot of people think you might wanna take your fall photos when the skies are clear and there's just like incredible weather. And today between the cold, the snow, the rain, and now it being sunny, I can honestly say those conditions are far and few between. You're probably not really gonna get the chance to get those conditions. But more importantly, you actually want bad weather when you're taking your fall photos. And that's because when it's raining or cloudy or just overall overcast, your colors in your photography come out a lot more punchy. You really want atmosphere in your photography and rain and sort of like gloomier conditions really bring out the characteristics in a location. So the last part of today's video, I'm actually gonna put the GoPro on my chest and take you on a bit of a POV through the canopy that I just mentioned. It honestly looks like it might start raining again, so I kind of want to do that POV separate, get back home, dry, and wrap up today's video from the studio doing things off with a voiceover. I don't really want to take this mic back out into the rain after the previous experience and see it break, so let's get on over to that canopy, see what we can create, and wrap up today's video. So in this last part of today's video, I thought why don't we just talk about a few quick photo tips that you can take advantage of with your own fall photos. So the first one is to really use a backdrop for whatever it is that your subject is. Now, in this case, we're using this black SUV that I was driving. And what I was trying to do was essentially create the atmosphere of the photo amongst fall. Now, unfortunately, the colors show up a lot greener than I feel like they looked in real life. So I've over edited these just a little bit to really create that fall photo look. But what you're really trying to do is to get a ton of color around whatever your subject is to really make your subject stand out and almost create a look like it's enveloped in its location. The second thing is to take advantage of natural framing elements. And so in this case, I'm using the road and the two tree widths to essentially create a natural frame that directs you towards the subject. And obviously by shooting lower, it kind of guides the viewer's eye up. And then to round it all off, it's to really just get creative with the roads themselves. Look for detail shots, look for environmental things that you can take your photos of. And overall, I think that you'll get some really pleasant fall photos out of this. And so with that, that's gonna conclude today's video. These are all the tips for fall that I think can really get you started taking some exciting fall photography. So I'm just gonna wrap it up quickly now and say thank you for watching and I hope to see you all in the next one.